Hey there, my friends. Welcome back. I um, I saw a video not too long back by Really Big Monkey, uh, and David had been tagged to come up with 10 items that uh, he carried camping with him that other people didn't carry, that he carried into the woods with him. And uh, I thought about that, and I thought, well, you know, I think I carry some things that are unique, but I had to think kind of long and hard about it, but I do have... Turns out I actually could have come up with maybe 11 or 12 things, but um, I'm going to show you what I carry that I really just don't go out into the woods without. Sunday's glaring at me because I have things sitting on her stool. Just a moment. There you go, kitty. All right. I figure everybody probably when they go into the woods, they carry things like um, Ziploc bags. Well, I also carry Ziploc bags, but what makes mine unique um, are two things, actually. One is that um, they're bags of unusual size. Um, and the other is that they're cheap because they come from the Dollar Tree. Now, you have to watch for them. And when I find them, you know, even if I have plenty, I go ahead and at least buy one more box. Now, this one contains three large bags. It's a dollar. That's a dollar box of bags. But let me show them to you. When we went kayak um, camping, we used so many of these. And uh, this particular one, there are three of them in this bag. And uh, these are the large. And I'll show you how big they are. Okay. So they are, let me see if it tells me what the dimensions are. Uh, three sizes, extra large. They are 15 by 15. They've got a handle on them. And uh, you can easily put an entire change of clothes in here. Maybe even shoes. Um, but this is what we put our clothes in, our changes of clothes when we went kayak camping. And uh, we were the only ones who had dry clothes to wear because you're going to get wet if you're in a kayak. It's a given. So that size large. Then there is, I've got one here. My stuff is avalanching. I've got one here, and this is size extra large. And I don't have the box, so I don't know, but you can see this one is indeed extra large. Actually, I've got two of them here because these come two to a box. So they look like they're about... I don't know, it's got to be probably 20 by 20, and that's the extra large. Had trouble finding these. I found the 1Xs and the 2Xs for a while, but just the other day I found these, and they're, they're awesome. Great bags for putting anything in in your pack that just needs to stay dry. Good, they're heavy, they're strong, uh, they have good Ziplocs on them, and they got a handle. And the other one, these come two, two for a dollar. Two for a dollar, and then uh, the ones I just showed you are three for a dollar for the large, two for a dollar for the extra large, and it costs you an entire dollar to get the two extra large. Now, this one, we also had dry sleeping bags, because this one, my friends, is... This one is um, 24 by 20. And in this one, although there's only one, two, a box, you can very readily put a full size sleeping bag in. And as a result, we had dry sleeping bags. Awesome. So that, although everybody carries Ziplocs, these are unique in that they are big and they are cheap so please watch the Dollar Tree you can't always find them it may take you three or four months before they get them in but awesome so that's one of my unique items that I carry when I go camping okay I have nine more now one of them that I really like I should reach in here randomly binder clips okay I use binder clips for everything when I'm camping. I use them to um, hold bug nets, hold tent flaps back, 
to um, in when I'm just kind of like making up pseudo tents. I use it to hold the fabric to poles or sticks or cord or anything. I carry a ton of these. I carry as many of these as I do carabiners. And these you get at the Dollar Tree. That one's not open. I apologize. You get them at the Dollar Tree for $12 for a dollar. And they're different sizes. Okay. Um, we've got really small ones. I use those for attaching my camera to my hat. Medium ones. And uh, medium large ones. Okay. $12 for a dollar. Dollar Tree. I don't go into the woods without binder clips. So that's my second unique item. Now, let me reach in and see what's next. <laughs> Electrician's tape. Do I carry um, Gorilla Tape and Duct Tape? Of course I do. Everyone does. And uh, a lot of people may carry this, but I carry this instead of adhesive tape. Um, it has lots of uses, but that's one of my favorite uses for it because I'm going to reach in here and find two more unique items. One of them is, um, and I'm, I'm sure there may be other people who do this as well, but I always carry little individually wrapped um, um, sanitary liners, okay? Uh, this one is tiny, but it has multiple uses. Now I'm going to go ahead and open this one up. I usually just keep them in a little plastic bag to keep them dry and to keep them um, from being contaminated. But you can see it's small, you know, maybe six inches. It's quite thin. And, uh, but it's great if you get a bad cut or a scrape or a burn, anything that needs to be covered, you can do it with this. Now, when we went out kayak camping, if you're like us and you don't get out as often as you'd like and you decide suddenly you're going to paddle 20 miles, you rub blisters on your hands. Now, I did have my gloves, but Mary Margaret did get a blister right in the web of her thumb. little piece of this wrapped on with electrician's tape because it gives, it stretches, it's um, waterproof, it sticks to itself well. I love putting bandages on with this stuff. Um... So, that's one of the items that I carry that I consider unique just because of the way I use it. Always carry electrician's tape. Always carry the, um, the little sanitary shields because they're just great. They're great as bandages. They're great as gauze. They um, great for a cut, for a scrape, for a burn, whatever you need to cover up and keep clean. And tape it on with the electrician's tape. The other thing I have here, and this may be truly unique to me, um, but many years ago when I worked in a lab, I, we, you know, you'd get, you get burned in a lab. There's hot glass, there's hot this, there are hot wire gauzes, there are hot beakers, whatever. You get burned. So we always had burn spray in our, um, our first aid kit. And burn spray back then, because mm, I was in school a long time ago, and uh, it would turn you yellow because it had two major active ingredients in it. Burn spray didn't. It worked really well. One was picric acid. That turned you yellow because it's very highly nitrated. Now, you don't see that much anymore, mostly because uh, picric acid is a, is, um, a trinitrated organic compound. Um, trinitrated, TN. Now, if you have trinitrotoluene, it's TNT. Picric acid is the same way. It makes these wonderful big yellow crystals that can be used in bombs. So, um, even in a solution, I guess it just sort of went out of favor being used in a burn spray, but it does good work. The other active ingredient in the burn spray is tannic acid, which also can stain your skin, but it's okay if it keeps you from hurting. So... As years went by, it occurred to me when I got burns to try a tea bag. Now, this has two really good advantages. Number one, it is chock full of uh, tannic acid. And those tannins do, do help the burn. They do help it heal. Uh, they do soothe it. And plus, if you've got a wet tea bag and you've got it as a compress on a burn, you're cooling it as well. So you've got your cool compress 
plus you've got your tannic acid. There are lots and lots of hedge cures for burns, um, and they all have, you know, something going for them. You know, if you got an aloe plant, you know, that stuff, it works great. You're not going to have one with you, probably, um, out in the wild. This is super cheap. It's light. It doesn't take up much room. And my gosh, nothing, nothing is better for a burn unless it's third degree and down to the bone or something, and then, you know, you're in trouble. But nothing is better for a bad burn than a tea bag to use as A, a compress, and B, for a source of tannic acid to help that, um, that burn not be as severe and to help it uh, be eased and to help it heal. Always carry a tea bag. Always one of my medical kit. Worst case, you can make tea. So, those are some of the unique things I have. Don't know what number I'm up to, but this one I love. This one also costs a dollar and comes from the Dollar Tree. It is a uh, picture hanging kit. One dollar. All right, now, this has all kinds of things in it. Most importantly, it has a little picture hanging hook, some nice small nails that are always handy for building this or that or the other. It has a whole lot of little um, screw eyes. Now, Intense Angler loves for you to carry screw eyes to do makeshift um, um, little casting rods. You know, it helps you to be able to sling your line out. If you've got a little screw eye, you can put a couple in, in a stick. Basically, make yourself a um, a little a little rod and reel, basically, or a rod anyway. The other thing that's got in it in this one dollar kit is two really nice pieces of um, twisted picture hanging wire. And as I recall, these are about I think they're three feet long each, so you got six feet of wire there. Now I haven't learned how to do snares yet. I still always take this little dollar kit into the woods with me. Because by golly, if I was desperate enough, I suppose I would I would learn pretty quick. So it's got a number of things in it. It's got lots of little brads, lots of little hooks of different sizes for hanging pictures, which I can just imagine would be really useful to be able to nail these to a tree and put a cord on it or something. Um, beautiful little small, perfect sized um, screw eyes and your snare wire dollar. So there you go. Got that. Now, another thing I always carry, and you probably have a heads up, because I, um, when I did my $10 challenge from uh, the Dollar Tree, I, I had one. Now this one comes from Walmart, so it's not from the Dollar Tree, but it still is a dollar. I always carry a path light. And this one I haven't even unlimbered yet. Um, I haven't pulled the um, haven't pulled the paper out of the battery, so it's not um, it's still charged. But basically, what I've got here is definitely sufficient light to walk around by in my camp. It's sufficient light that if I walk away from my camp in the dark, I can by golly find it. And uh, it does have a little pointed stake in the bottom, so you can stick it in the ground if you wish. If you wish, you can take it and uh, take it completely off the top if you just want to use the light itself, the little light emitting diode there. And it's rechargeable. I have had some of these um, to field testing out beside my front walk for um, just over a year because I put them out Halloween last year. They still stay lit all night. It's not a huge light, but it's sufficient light and they still recharge and stay lit all night. Some of them weren't as good as others. Um, one or two have failed. Well, one failed, the other one the uh, lawnmower guy got with the weed eater. But there's one out there that still, after a year, is giving sufficient light. So another one of my unique items, I carry this wonderful little solar path light, 97 cents at Walmart. I've paid as much as $2 for them, but uh, if you grab them this time of year, they're on clearance, 97 cents. So there you go, another dollar and a unique item. And uh, let's see what else I've got. Okay, this is a biggie. And I don't know how unique you will think it is. Because it's just a little solar charger. Um, 
Let me get this out. It was given to me. I was given about three or four of them because they were cheap at the time. And so, what the heck, Mary Margaret got me a, uh, a number of them. And what it is, is a little solar charger for things like your, um, like your cell phones or things like that. I did have to get a little adapter for it because it is set up for um, mini USB. And my phone is micro USB. But I did find an adapter and I found them cheap and ordered enough for all of my little things so I've got this this solar charger that I can hook up to my phone um, it also has a USB outlet on it this little solar charger I've tried it it will charge your phone now it takes quite a few hours in the Sun to do that but it does okay now if you're bugging out into the woods I don't know that I'll ever do that. However, if I were lost in the woods and there was no signal, I'm still going to have my phone with me. And uh, if you've got your phone, and it's a smartphone, you've got a library. I have all sorts of um, how-to books, bushcraft books, survival books, camping books, fishing books, all. don't have my phone with me at the moment. It's upstairs. All on my phone so by taking this item with me into the woods and I've got a little tin that it fits in you know that's um, you know and it's got plastic to keep it dry and that sort of thing I've got a library with me in the woods you know I may not be able to use it all day I may be able to use it an hour a day uh, because of the time it takes to recharge that phone but I have a library and if there's cell phone signal I have a phone so this is one of the items that I feel like I should always have with me so that I can have access I have Kindle reader on my Android phone so any Kindle book I can buy I have a you know the average phone mine is 12 gig huge storage space you can put a lot of books on 12 gig and so you know be selective put your favorite books to read um, Put something you haven't read and put your how-to stuff on it. There's a ton of how-to stuff in the Kindle store. So, I've got one more thing. And this is a, not a dollar thing. I don't know how much this costs. It was given to me. But there are plenty of things like that out there. Um, they work well. They even have a... Um, they've even got... Uh, I think this is what you need for your... Possibly for your... Um, iPhone that may be an iPhone charger I don't have an iPhone so I don't know but I think that's what that is iPhone charger it's got the um, like I said the USB and the um, mini USB and I've changed that to micro USB love that have my library that's worth a few extra bucks and we're not talking about a lot of money here we don't have a lot of money to spend now this thing I paid two dollars and seventy nine cents for this and uh, because I got it at the Lowe's. Now, if you try to get it in the spring when everybody's putting out their gardens and you look for it at Walmart, you're probably going to get it for a couple of bucks. But I was so delighted to see it at this time of year in the fall that I grabbed it even for two seventy nine dollars because you know how stingy I am with money. Now, I love this stuff. I've got a roll here. The reason I bought a new one is because I use it so much that um, that I use it up eventually. Now, what this is, is cheap Velcro for tying plants up to a stake. Now, I use this as a spare set of hands. It's fuzzy on one side and just a little bit, um, you know, um, spiky on the other. And let me tell you, it is not, if you do several wraps, it is not coming loose, okay? It is not coming loose. Ugh. It's strong, okay? Even though it's chintzy, little Velcro, if you do just one, you know, I mean, I can definitely pull it apart if I take it like this. I'm going to overlap it maybe a couple of inch, an inch. And yeah, I can pull that off, right? Ugh. I can pull that off. But if you wrap it, it's not coming loose. Worst case, 
you could use it, you could tie it. But I use this as, as I said, spare hands. You need to um, hold something together quickly. Um, I use it, I usually do a wrap or two around my tent stakes when I'm putting them back in my tent bag. Um, sometimes if I'm doing a makeshift kind of tent and I'm using tent stakes and I want them, they cross at the top, slap a little of this on it both ways, it's not going anywhere. That and my binder clips, I can make a tent out of anything. So, Velcro plant ties. It's not big industrial Velcro. I mean, I know a lot of people carry Velcro with them, but this stuff is virtually disposable and it is um, super handy. So there, that's what I've got. I have got plant tie Velcro, a path light. I have a tea bag for burns. I have my solar charger for my library. I have my um, burn slash gauze slash padding for a blistered heel slash whatever bandage. Have my binder clips. Dollars worth. Don't go into the woods without them. Have my electrician's tape. Nice, stretchy, sticks, stays. Great for putting on bandages because it'll give. What else? Got my $1 picture hanging kit, snare wire, little hooks, little nails, little eye screws. Okay, that is my unique stuff to go into the woods. And uh, there may be more of you out there who also use these things. I don't know. But um, I know nobody told me about them. I kind of thought them up myself. So that I that's my... 10 unique items that I personally always take with me if I'm going to go in the woods, and it's always in my pack. You can see that, you know, if I bundle all of this stuff up, now I'm not counting the plat. I forgot the plastic bags. Don't forget the plastic bags. They're awesome. But, you know, I usually have these around things in my pack, like spare clothes, things that have to stay dry. They're in these bags. Super cheap, anywhere from... The large ones, three for a dollar. The medium ones, two for a dollar. The huge one, I can put a backpack in, a buck. But everything else, basically, you know, it's it's this big. It's not big. It's a small little bundle of stuff. I mean, pretty much all of it would fit in the side pocket. It looks big when I stick it up in the camera lens. But basically, all of it will fit in the side pocket of your pack. So, um, I hope you enjoyed that. As I said, most of this stuff is super cheap. But watch for it, especially if you go into Dollar Trees. Everything there is a dollar. And uh, I do admit that I, as I said, a couple of things, like the Velcro um, for the plants. That comes from Walmart usually. I got some from Lowe's. And the uh, path lights, the best ones I get are from Walmart. But you have to watch for them. They're not going to have them. They may have a few this time of year, but... They're selling them out as fast as they can. Buck for that. I don't go. I don't go paddling. I don't go camping. I don't go in the woods unless I've got a little path light or at least part of one stuck in my pack. At least the light and the uh, the you know solar cell. That part at least. I mean that's only that big. But I like to have the whole thing. They're light. They don't take much room. They're cheap. So. I keep that in there. The Velcro and the Path Light, they come from Walmart. The rest comes from the Dollar Tree. There's not, you know, there's not, maybe, now, the, the solar charger was online, but I don't think it was more than just a couple of dollars. Probably came from China. I don't know. But, so there's not $15 in this bag. And these are things that are going to super increase your comfort in the woods. They're all useful things. Things that I just don't go in the woods without. Okay. I have blathered on long enough. I'm going to get out of here. And I appreciate you tuning in and listening to me here. Um, I'm going to get some more videos up. It's really been a crazy few weeks. So I haven't been posting uh, much. And I've still got lots of ideas. I know I've promised you a lot of things. I'm going to do some more napping. I'm going to do... Um, I am. I'm still working on a couple of puzzles 
with my lightning strike. I'm going to get that out because that's pretty much just a matter of putting it together. Um, I'm going to video my sculptures and uh, I might show you my wood carving tools. Um, I'm going to do some stuff with my hammocks and my uh, bug nets. I'm going to start working on the bug net this week. And um, when I was at the, if you can see over my shoulder there, <laughs> I was in the thrift store, the Goodwill thrift store this week, and I wanted to get an old, um, I want to experiment with an underquilt. It is getting chilly out, and, and you know, I'm a delicate southern flower, so I can't get cold. So I want to experiment with an underquilt for my hammock, which I still don't know if I like to sleep in a hammock or not, but, you know, we're going to find out. But when I was in the thrift store, I found some sleeping bags on the rack with, like, you know, bedspreads. And I thought, I don't know how much they want for these, but I picked up a couple. I wasn't sure which one I wanted. I figured I'd see how much they cost. And when I found out they were $1.99 a piece, I got them both. So I've got a couple of old sleeping bags. I'm sure they're light weather sleeping bags, but it's going to be a better underquilt than just a piece of nylon or polyester under me. So we're going to experiment with that too. I know that um, uh, there are folks online that have some ideas about how to do those underquilts, and we'll see what I come up with. So thanks for watching. It's been a pleasure. Uh, leave me your comments because I learn from you. I see ideas like you know, intense angler, really big monkey. Um, you know, I look at, you know, you know, Bonnie Cave has got some amazing things out there, and uh, and Diane at Dee Dee Mandy Snow Fog Bushcraft, I love her stuff. Um, Tara Farley always gives me ideas. Um, Southpaw Bushcraft gives me ideas, and uh, oh my goodness, there's so many of you. Um, that, that I know uh, Dean O, he's always giving me encouragement and feedback. And this community is self-perpetuating. We learn from each other and, you know, together we're always, we're better and we have bigger and better ideas. So um, do leave me your comments because I just, I love, I love getting your feedback. Sorry I can't shout out to everybody who has helped me so much over the last couple of months since I got on to YouTube, but uh, no, I care. I love y'all to bits. So I appreciate it. Give me a, a thumbs up if you feel like it, but especially give me your feedback. I appreciate it. All right. I thank you. And uh, if I can find my remote, I'll turn off and go upstairs and try to get this uploaded for you. Sunday went to sleep. She hasn't made a mouse peep. Bye-bye. Have a good day.